Mario Young, known on the west side of Chicago as, Rio, was a five-star universal, unknown vice lord, and a certified snitch. He wore a wire for over a decade, testified against the ruthless leader of a faction, of renegade four-corner hustlers, known as the Syndicate, Labar Bro Man Span, and dozens of other gang members. Rio, may be the biggest rat, in Chicago gang history. Travel back in time with me, to the summer of 2003. The infamous leader of the unknown Vice Lords, Willie Lloyd, was released from prison in 2002, and once again imposed his street tax on drug dealers, during hot summer days in 2003. During this same time period, Ray Longstreet, was the chief of the Four Corner Hustlers. In 1997, an outlaw set of fours, led by Bro Man, who renounced his rank as a five-star universal, in the Gordy Boy faction of fours, and declared himself chief, continued to wage war with Ray Longstreet's lieutenants in 2003. Martiz Nunnery, aka, Shorty, was a five-star universal unknown vice lord like Rio the Rat. Martiz, did not testify against Bro Man when they were initially charged in state court with the murder of, Cato. After his arrest in November 2003, Martiz Nunnery pleaded guilty to conspiracy to commit murder, and began serving decades in prison. He kept his mouth shut, until the Four Corner Hustlers RICO trial, in 2021. Martiz, testified that the Flores twins put out a hit on Latin King Chief, and DMX's close friend, Rudy Wrangle Jr., aka, Cato. Martiz, wanted to make that dirty money, and he knew the person to call, to get the job done. In June 2003, Bro Man ordered a Four Corner Hustler named, Dunnail Squeaky Simmons, to kill Cato in a barbershop, on the city's west side. A month later, in July 2003, Rio the Rat, was released from jail during the day to collect information, and he returned to jail every night, to tell the police all about his activities. Now, we'll replay some of Martiz Nunnery's testimony, to refresh everyone's memory about the Flores twins' alleged involvement in the hit on Cato. Then, we will reveal an interesting conversation between Martiz, and his good friend Rio the Rat, before we return with more evidence that Rio, was the biggest snitch in Chicago gang history. Thanks for joining the Cartoon News Network, as we go deep cover to expose, Rio the Rat, in our feature presentation, Snitch, S-N-I-T-C-H, Sorry nigga, I'm trying to come home. Sorry nigga, I'm trying to come home. Who is Frederick Bell? He was a guy that I've been knowing since like, 94. Maybe. Was Mr. Bell in a gang? Yes. Which gang? Conservative Vice Lords. And did you have a relationship with Mr. Bell, meaning drug dealing or other illegal matters? Yes. And so you said you learned from Mr. Bell about the contract on Cato's life? Yes. Did you have a conversation with him? Yes. Was it in person or over the phone? In person. Where did you meet? At North Riverside Mall. Was there anyone else present? No, just me and Fred. And what did Mr. Bell tell you? He told me that some Latin Kings, some, more Latin Kings, two brothers, had a contract on Cato to be killed, and asked me, did I know anybody that might be able to take care of it for him? So Mr. Bell told you that, some Latin Kings, who were brothers, yeah. had a contract on Cato? Yes. Did he say who the brothers were? Yes. The twins, Peter. Not Peter. Pedro and Margarito Flores. Who were they? They were two known drug dealers. Were they members of the Latin Kings as well? Yeah. Would you say that you had a close relationship with the twins, or did you just know of them? No, I just knew of them. And people referred to them as? The twins? Yes. Do you know if they were twins? I don't know if they were. They kind of looked alike, yeah. And Mr. Bell told you this related to some drugs? Yes. What did Mr. Bell say? Mr. Bell said that Cato took 300 keys of cocaine from the twins and they were willing to pay someone $200,000 to kill them. So Mr. Bell told you that Cato took 300 keys? Yes. What's a key? A kilo of cocaine. So, 300 kilograms? Yes. And Mr. Nunnery, this is in 2003, correct? Yes. At this point, you've been dealing drugs since you were a young man? Yes. Based on your experience, how much would 300 kilograms of cocaine be worth in 2003? Around 4.5 million. And you said, Mr. Bell was offering money to carry out this contract? Yes. And how much did he offer? 
He said that they were offering him 200,000 and if I find somebody that we would split the money. He would give me 100,000 and he would keep 100,000. So how did you leave it with Mr. Bell? I told him I, I try to find somebody. I got somebody in mind. And what did you do next? I think I called Labar and told him I wanted to talk to him about something. How long after the conversation with Mr. Bell, did you call Mr. Spam? As soon as I left. Mr. Nunnery, at the beginning of your testimony, we discussed a person named Mario Young. Yes. And if you would, just remind the ladies and gentlemen of the jury, does Mr. Young go by a nickname? Rio. And you've known Mr. Young for some time? Yes. And do you associate Mr. Young with a gang? Yes. Which gang? Unknown Vice Lords. Same as you? Yeah. Now, do you remember a time, after the murder of Mr. Wrangle, where you met with Mr. Young in person? Yes. And where was that meeting? Inside my apartment on Laramie. And why were you meeting with Mr. Young on that date? Just to catch up, just talking. And again, you were both unknown Vice Lords? Yes. And who was present for this conversation? Me, Rio, and one of his friends named Yidhi. Yet he, is that Y-E-T-H-E? Yes. And you said he was one of Rio's friends? Yeah. Did you associate Yet he with a gang? Yes. Which gang? He was an unknown vice lord also. Now, at this time in 2003, did you know if Mr. Young had recently been released from custody? Yes. Do you know if he was in federal or state custody? He was in federal custody. Did you trust Mr. Young at this time? No. There were plenty of good reasons for Marty Shorty Nunnery and other gang members on Chicago's west side to not trust Mario Young, aka Rio the Rat in 2003, but they trusted him anyway. Willie Lloyd had developed a heroin addiction in prison and had lost some respect in the streets and lost control over his gang. He was shot six times in August 2003 by members of his own gang and paralyzed for the rest of his life. For his part, Rio the Rat maintained his rank as a five-star universal, unknown vice lord, giving him the clout to run his own block, and interact with other high-ranking members from different gangs, despite the fact that there were several warning signs that he was a snitch. First of all, Rio's allegedly released on gun and drug charges from federal custody in July 2003, one month after the high-profile murder of Latin King Chief, Rudy Cato Rangel. Second, he immediately comes home with a proposal for his homie, Martiz Nunnery, to rob some Mexican drug dealers. Sounds similar to the plot to kill Cato, right? So, Martiz Nunnery should have suspected that his longtime friend, Mario Young, had turned snitch, before he told him that Squeaky could put in the work. And where it says, speakers on lines 5, 6, and 7, what are the speakers listed there? Myself, Mario, and yet he. Now, you testified that you've heard this recording recently, during our meetings, correct? Yes. And before I start the recording, could you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury, what you and Mr. Young were discussing, prior to the recording beginning? We were talking about, Rio, having some Mexicans that he wanted to be robbed, some, drug dealers that he wanted to be robbed, and I was explaining to him that, Squeaky, can get the job done. Mortiz Nunnery is an idiot. He said that he didn't trust Rio the Rat in July 2003, but he conspired with him to commit an armed robbery. And here's a fun fact, CEO Dave, the mind, body, and soul behind the Cartoon News Network, was locked up with Martiz Nunnery in Kendall County Jail, from December 2022, through February 2023, on bullshit charges of stalking King County Sheriff, racist Ron Hain, and King County State's Attorney, Jizz in her mouth, Jamie Mosser. So please, smash that like button, subscribe, and check out our series, Clan County Chronicles, for more stories about that, but now let's get back to our series, Killing King Cato, The Four Corner Hustlers Rico Trial, with testimony from, Rio the Rat, followed by a hilarious story showing that crime doesn't pay, and I mean that literally, from Martiz Shorty Nunnery. Mr. Young, I'm now going to go back to 2003. When were you arrested for your 2003 conviction? 2002. And what were you arrested for? Distribution of heroin and possession of a weapon. Distribution of heroin? And you said possession of a weapon? Yes. Who arrested you? It was a multiple group arresting me. You said a local group? Multiple. Multiple groups. 
Were there state and federal law enforcement? Yes. And when you were arrested, did you talk to the law enforcement officers and admit your conduct? Yes. Did you give the officers information about a number of different people? Yes. About how many people did you talk about, roughly? I can't even count. Sorry, nigga. I'm trying to come home. Was it a lot of people? Yes. Well, the walls are talking to me, and I know you think I'm wrong. So, you were in jail? Yes. At some point, were you physically released from jail? Yes. And when was that? 03, January. I mean July, of 03. So, you were physically released from jail in July of, 03? Yes. Were you allowed to go back, and live at home? No. Why not? Because I. Part of the agreement was, I, had to get locked up at night. So, you said you had an agreement. Part of your agreement was to get locked up at night? Yes. What was this agreement? That I was going to cooperate with the government. You were going to cooperate with the government? Yes. What was? What did you do as part of your cooperation? Collected information on different individuals, that was the target of the day. Well, the walls are talking to me, and I know you think I'm wrong. Now, at the beginning, you testified that, you and Fred, were going to split the 200,000. Is that correct? Yes. And so how much was your share supposed to be? I was supposed to get the 100,000 from Fred, and I was going to pay, Labar, the 20,000. So, you were supposed to make about 80,000? Yes. But Fred only gave you 15? Yes. What did you say to Mr. Span, and what did he say to you? Well, I was telling him, you know, that Fred was trying to get the money or whatever, and he was like, man, I'm gonna have to fuck Fred up if you don't come up with that money. And, who said that? Bro man. What did you understand him to mean when he said, I'm gonna have to fuck Fred up? Kill Fred. Now, at this point, you had paid Mr. Span $15,000? Yeah. Did you ever pay him any more money? Yeah, maybe two more thousand dollars, maybe. Is that money you received from Fred or Doug? No. Where did you get that money? Out of my pocket. So, Martiz Nunnery conspired to kill Cato in June 2003 and actually lost money instead of making it. Make up your own minds whether the Flores twins actually put a $200,000 contract on Cato's life or whether a couple of broke-ass conservative vice lords named Fred and Doug tricked Martiz Nunnery into going to prison for decades by hiring bro man to kill Cato for their own personal reasons. Everyone can check out more testimony from Martiz Shorty Nunnery, Demetrius Harris, aka Pig, and Mario, Rio the Rat Young, on our Friends Crown TV Courts YouTube channel to help you decide. Now, it's back to July 2003. Rio the Rat is released onto the streets of Chicago, and records his lifelong friend, Martiz Nunnery, on a wiretap talking about robbing some Mexican drug dealers. Obviously, it was a setup. The crazy part is, Rio the Rat, and his FBI friends, would use the same playbook to try to trick, Bro Man, off the streets in 2003. In November of that year, Labar Bro Man Span, Martiz Shorty Nunnery and Dunnail Squeaky Simmons all went to jail for conspiring to kill Cato. Bro Man was the only one to beat the case and come home. Still, Bro Man is not a smart man because he didn't figure out that Rio the Rat was a snitch even though he recorded a private conversation with Martiz Nunnery in his apartment on Laramie in July 2003 Flash forward to the year 2012, Bro Man is still showing Rio the rat respect and love on the streets, but Rio's life as a gangster outside, that was snitching big time behind closed doors, from 2003, ended a decade after the year it started, in 2013, when he was arrested on more federal drug, and gun charges. Mario, Rio the rat young, was released from jail in 2020, so he was a free man, when he testified in the Four Corner Hustlers RICO trial in 2021. Years later, did you learn whether or not, Mr. Young, was cooperating with the federal government? Yes. What did you learn? I learned that he had been wearing a wire for the federal government, from the time of his release. And did you learn that, Mr. Young, had recorded your conversation with him, on this date? Yes. 
And did you have the opportunity to hear the recording? Yes. First, years ago? Yes. Do you know when you first heard and received the recording? I first heard the recording the day that I was arrested, and then later on at my trial. So, the recording that we're talking about was part of your case in Cook County? Yes. Where you were convicted for the murder of Mr. Wrangell? Yes. So, sir, I'd like to. Actually, before I do that, approximately how many recordings of conversations with Mr. Spann do you think you made? Multiple. Is it hundreds? Yes. Did you make hundreds of recordings with other individuals? Yes. Sorry, nigga. I'm trying to come home. And did you testify, in the grand jury, about your dealings with Mr. Spann? Yes. And was that in, about, March of 2019? Yes. And what, generally, without getting into the specifics, did you testify in the grand jury about? About narcotic sales, extortion acts, and general things that we have done. And did that? Did your, the information you provided in the grand jury cover a large time period? Yes. Sorry, nigga. I'm trying to come home. From when, to when? From 02, till up to 13. 02, to about 2013, you said? Yes. Wow. 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 That's crazy. Wearing a wire on niggas for 10 years, is crazy. You've gotta smash that like button and subscribe, if, you agree it's crazy that Rio the Rat, got bro man and so many other stupid gangbangers to talk on a wiretap about illegal shit, that he couldn't even remember how many niggas that he snitched on. Crazy. At the Four Corner Hustlers Rico trial in 2021, Rio the Rat was asked, why he was talking to bro man about fake Mexican drug connects in 2003. He told the jury that, it was law enforcement's idea. Remember, Bro Man, and Martiz Nunnery, were both arrested for Cato's murder in 2003. Martiz, testified that he first heard the recordings of himself talking to Rio the Rat about robbing a fake Mexican drug connect, after his arrest. That means, street niggas are stupid. Bro Man, couldn't figure out that Rio the Rat, and his friends at the FBI, tried the same trick on him in 2003. For 10 years, Rio the Rat wore a wire during the day to sell drugs, and control the corner at Maypole and Kilpatrick for the unknown vice lords, only to spend his nights, talking to law enforcement. In his testimony, Rio the Rat, described two incidents that he had with, Bro Man, in 2012. The first incident involved Glow Gang member, and Four Corner Hustler, Ron Trell Turnipseed, aka, Main Main, or Lil Boss, who was selling drugs on Rio the Rat's block. Lil Boss, and one of Rio the Rat's little homies got into a verbal altercation, but things cooled down after Bro Man and Rio the Rat, were called to resolve the dispute. The second incident, occurred when Bro Man drove past Rio the Rat, and saw him wearing sandals. If you're up to date on our Killing Kato series, then you already know that Bro Man told Ricky Fountain, aka, Pig, that four corner hustlers don't buy Gucci. They buy guns. So, Bro Man was suspicious of any nigga wearing sandals, but obviously he wasn't suspicious enough to suspect that his homie, Rio the Rat, was the biggest snitch in Chicago gang history. And when you were arrested, did you talk to the law enforcement officers and admit your conduct? Yes. Did you give the officers information about a number of different people? Yes. About how many people did you talk about, roughly? I can't even count. Sorry, <laughs> Was it a lot of people? Yes.